if you have your Bible and like to turn or watch the screen, we're going to read from John, the third chapter. God's word says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we've seen and you do not receive our witness if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things no one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven that is the son of man who is in heaven and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. stop right there we uh, we mentioned last week briefly about the Holy Spirit does anybody remember what we mentioned about the Holy Spirit nobody remembers okay well the Holy Spirit is absolutely necessary for us to function as Christians. Without him, we cannot. Matter of fact, you're not a Christian unless the Holy Spirit lives within you. You can't do anything. You can try to be a Christian. You can act like a Christian. You can fake it. But you cannot do the things of God. And you cannot hear from God. And if you can't hear from God, you're in trouble. You're, you're, you're being a fake. If God's not speaking to you, how are you going to know what to pray for? How are you going to know who to pray for? How are you going to know what God really wants you to do? You can't. Now, in general, I would say, uh, churchianity doesn't believe that. But God's word says that. We have to hear from God the Holy Spirit in order to know what to do. Specifically, generally in any way if you don't have the Holy Spirit grab hold of your chair you're not going to heaven you cannot get into heaven without the Holy Spirit he's the one who comes into your heart when you make a profession of faith and say Lord Jesus I want to trust you as my Savior when you do that and you mean it God changes your heart I don't know exactly how he does that. I know when he changed my heart. But I didn't understand it then. But I know it goes from being a fleshly heart 
and unresponsive to God, being responsive to God and hearing from Him and knowing what He wants us to do. In fact, I'm going to ask us to do something today. Some of you may not want to do this, but ever, most every place in the Bible where it talks about worshiping God is speaking of one thing, speaking of people falling on their face before God. And you see Jesus and you see people coming in <coughs> and speaking to him and they recognized who he was. Who he was. What happened? They worshipped him. They worshipped him. And they fell on their face before him and acknowledged that he was Lord. Uh, some of you may have never done that. Many of us in this room haven't done it often, if ever. And I'm going to ask some of you, actually I'm going to ask all of you, you can choose to do this or not, to fall on your face before God and pray. That's an unusual thing, isn't it? We normally don't do that. Why? God gives us examples of doing it. God tells us to do it, and yet we don't do it because we do not want to get in that position of total obeisance to God. So I'm going to ask you, um, if you will, if you want to just kneel in front of a chair, if you want to get on the floor, I'm going to get on the floor. As many of you as feel that you can do that, now, I'm going to have trouble getting off the floor. But I'm going to get on the floor, and I'm going to ask some of you in a few minutes to come help me up so that I can sit upright again. Uh, but this is an act of worship to God, and I hope that you will do this. Matter of fact, honey, I'm going to need you to help me with a cane or something. To, to get over here, I'm going to get in this chair right here. God has made it so simple for us to become a Christian. We've made it so complicated. Here's what you need to do if you want to become a Christian and you're not. Lord Jesus, please come in and change me and save me cause me to be a new creation I'll do it isn't that hard you don't even have to use those exact words matter of fact all you have to do is just say oh God help me and he will and he'll change you doesn't mean you'll never mess up again boy we mess up all the time but it don't mean that you'll go to heaven for sure and that God will use you. And he'll show you the purpose that he put you on this earth for. And he'll bless you. Anybody? This morning we're going to be talking about walking. Walking. Do you all know how to walk? Yes. Okay. Today we want to learn just how God helps us walk the way he requires us to walk. Do you know why people use these? What are these right here? Canes. Canes. Well, do you know why they use them? Because of a broken leg. Yes, you can have a broken leg. Yes. Have you? good reason. Have you ever known someone that used a cane or crutches? I knew my mom. Your mom did? <laughs> and who else? My mom. Yes. Mama too. Yes. That's why. And why did they use them? Because did they I already say a broken leg. Broken leg, yes, you already said that. <laughs> That's right, they use how you are. 
So we use them when something is wrong with our legs and we need extra help to walk, don't we? Yes. So people that have trouble with their legs, they put their weight on that crutch instead of their leg. Okay. Right? Or their cane. Yes, their cane. So I've, I've already asked, did you, you say you do know someone that's used one. Usually the doctor puts a cast on your leg to help keep it straight and the bones to grow back straight and then he lets the person walk with a cane or a crutch. Without this support the person would fall every time he, he walked without a cane or a crutch to help him walk. So one day a little girl went out to play in the snow. There was ice all over the sidewalk and she thought it would be fun to walk on ice. What happens? When you walk on ice, you fall. And you your leg. she started out gaily, but soon she slipped down. She slipped and fell down. She didn't break a bone, but she learned a good lesson. And then she asked her daddy to hold her hand so she wouldn't fall. She had learned that she couldn't walk on the ice without someone to hold her hand to keep her from falling. God knew that even after we're saved, we would fall into sin unless we have someone to hold our hand and to help us. Amen. He gave us the Holy Spirit to be the one called us alongside us to help us. God has asked us to live a holy life and he knew that we couldn't do it by ourselves. So he gave us the Holy Spirit to help us live that life, his life in us. The Holy Spirit is God. So we have God, we have the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. The Holy Spirit is God. Just as God the Father and God the Son are just... Also God. They're all, they're all God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When the Lord Jesus Christ was here on earth, he told the disciples that he was going to die on the cross and then he would go back to heaven. After his resurrection, the disciples' hearts were very sad because they were used to being with Christ and having his help. Christ made a wonderful promise to them and to all Christians who would live afterwards. He promised that he would send another comforter. And that comforter was to take over the work that Christ had been doing for them while he was on earth. He was to guide them, to comfort them, to strengthen them, to help them, and to teach them out of God's word. The Holy Spirit is like the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was going to do just the same things for them that Christ had been doing. He can be with all Christians at the same time. So when... When Jesus was on the earth, he could only help those that were with him. But then when he went back to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit could help everyone on the earth. So he can be with all Christians at the same time to help all of us at the same time. Christ could be only with a few people at one time when he was right here on earth in his earthly body. But if Christ lived today, we would probably never be able to see him because we wouldn't have the money to make a trip to Palestine or wherever he was or where he lived. But now the Holy Spirit has come in his place and the Holy Spirit lives in the heart of every believer in every country of the world. Christ also promised that the Holy Spirit would abide or be with us forever. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us, no matter what we do. The minute you take Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit is given to you, and He comes to live in your heart. But we can hurt Him and keep Him from doing His work in our hearts by doing what? How can we keep the Holy Spirit from working in our hearts and doing the things that uh, the Lord Jesus wants us to do? You know? Do you know? We can, do you know now? What keeps us, what 
What can hurt him and keep him from doing his work in our hearts? Doing bad stuff, right? Sinning. Sinning against him. When he tries to do work, he can do good stuff. Okay. He wants us to do good stuff. Every time we sin, the Holy Spirit convicts us or tells us that we're wrong and that we've sinned. And then we must listen to him and confess that sin as soon as he tells us what's wrong. Then God will forgive us and the Holy Spirit can go back to work. And his work is teaching and guiding and producing fruit in our lives. And the Holy Spirit can help and support us in our Christian lives just as a cane and a crutch help to support people who have something wrong with their legs. So you see, someone, so you see someone with a cane or a crutch. When you see someone with a cane or a crutch, I hope that this little story will remind you So when you see someone with someone with a cane or a crutch, I hope you will remember this little story that you can't walk pleasing God unless you let the Holy Spirit help you and support you. If you try to walk the Christian life without Him, you will fall into sin, just as people with broken legs will fall without a cane or crutch to help them. So, here they are. This will help you walk if your leg is hurt. And who will help you do the right thing? God. God and God. the Holy Spirit will help you. Would you would do you need would you like to add anything to that? No. No, it's perfect. Okay, so when you see someone with a cane or a crutch, you remember this. The Holy Spirit will help you. Okay. Thank you. You can go back to your seat.